Hey, what's up, everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. Got you another video today, and it's going to be on light and shadows, uh, digital painting. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I've got some samples here that I rendered out real quick, uh, and the, the goal of this is to practice different kinds of shadow. Here, you've got a sphere with a bounce light, a um, little bit of add noise or grain to the table. Uh, you know some various light and shadow work going on there you know really basic but it's a great exercise to do so I'll go ahead and do one of these real quick for you uh, I'll start another layer you see I use a couple layers for each and I'll call this one um, I guess I'll do a pyramid shape you know feel free to follow along and and you can you know do this exercise to just get a good feel for um, shapes and and how you want to you know digitally paint and how you see light and shadow so uh, I'm going to start off with uh, kind of doing a pyramid shape like that, already in a perspective. And by working with layers, I can adjust this too. But I'm going to go ahead and paint this. Now, as far as my settings, and again, I'm using Photoshop CS6. Uh, go to my brush settings. I'll show you those real quick. It's a standard brush with transfers at the pen pressure, pen pressure, no shape dynamics. Uh, this is just a basic brush that came with Photoshop. So. I get people that'll ask me, you know, hey, can you send send me your brush uh, presets or something like that? That's all I'm using. I just showed just so that's that's the best I can do. I don't really quite understand even how to save uh, brush presets. But what I do is I turn the opacity down. Also, I'll usually start with we'll say 30%, and I'll go back and forth to get my tonal values. Now I can do this real quick with just the gradient tool. So I'll show you that real quick. I've got to set the sphere because that was the last thing I was using. You've got uh, linear sphere, kind of a pyramid shape there. Uh, it's linear, but with you know dark light dark. And, you know you can specify all this, but you just do a, a a pass like this, and the more you stretch the pass over the top, you can adjust the intensity of the fade. So that's that's a quick way to just get your your fade. And for something like this, this type of shadow that I'm trying to create, this works really well. I also like just practicing painting it in and getting a better control of the the brush. And I hit X and go back and forth if I want to relighten it. Hit X again, darken it, and I can even hit Alt and select the tone that I'm working with through there if that's quicker, you know, helps me uh, blend faster, whatever. Then I just take the smudge brush. Again, this is a chalk brush that's inside Photoshop. Nothing special here. And I'll go over to the brush setting again and show you. On this one, I put 20% scattering on both axes. Um, which actually, I don't have it set to pen pressure, but I'll, I'll have to check that. Um, and I, I play around with all this, but I, I know scattering both axes is 20% still works. It must just be on all the time. So transfer um, onto pen pressure, okay, and then smoothing. And that's it. So copy those settings if you want and all that does is allows me to blend and smudge uh, kind of at the same time it moves it around you know gives me a little bit of texture you know so I'm not completely uh, you know so I got a little bit of grit there or a little bit of you know something that looks more hand painted or whatever um, so now I'll uh, control D will deselect that I'll check my layers here I've got my per first pyramid layer I'm gonna actually hit edit transform distort I'm going to move that over. I'm just kind of trying to envision, you know, the perspective. Um, you know, and if you wanted to do this correctly, you would draw perspective lines, a box, a cube shape inside the perspective lines. You'd put an X across the top of it. I guess I can show you up here maybe. Let's see here. Put the opacity back up. And all you would do is you'd go up like this, do an X. And you could draw that pyramid shape from the middle of the, the sphere like that. If you want to be correct, Control Alt Z will allow you to go back. Okay, but I, I'm I'm just eyeballing this, you know, and it's part of the uh, you know part of an exercise for me anyway. So um, I'll probably keep adjusting that. I'm gonna go ahead and add another layer. I'll just call it Pyramid Two, like so. And I'll use the selection tool. I'll grab the other visible side to this and we'll say that's my second shape for it again I want to digitally paint it because you know 
it's an exercise of practice so even though I could really easily just use the gradient tool like I said and starting off uh, light I can just work up to the the value that I want uh, and with those settings that I showed you it works a lot like a marker and I like that a lot because you can just you can build in some texture if you want you can slowly work up to the value that you want which is nice um, it's just a really good good feel for the brush settings and then practice using you know obviously this is just a hard round brush that I'm using practice using like say your chalk brushes your scatter brushes and and playing with the settings of each one of those to uh, to get the desired effect that you want so I'm gonna make the light source on this one to the right so I'm gonna lighten this side up just a little bit more uh, another cool thing you can do when you're working like this you see how I've got it selected and I'm working on just this area well I can just hit let's say it's command shift I try that yeah inverts the selection and I gotta make sure I don't paint up and around here but I can real quickly keep working on the edge of this other shape um, and I'd have to bounce back to the layer sorry you know and I can start working on this shape if I wanted to so just remember that command shift I is, is a quick way to do that Con command D or control D if you're working on a PC um, is deselect so so there's my basic pyramid shape you know it's starting to get there it looks a little bit out of whack but that's okay because all I gotta do is hold shift select both those layers edit transform distort try to bend that you know more to what would look correct I guess but something like that and then a uh, quick way to do a shadow is copy both these you can hold once they're both selected you drag them right here to give you a new set of layer layers layers combined to layer um, and I'll hit command E that merges those two down so now my copy is, is solid um, I'll just actually use it as reference really um, because when I digitally paint I don't I don't do it in total opacity or I would say you could just hit uh, control L for levels and adjust this down to black but since it's not totally opaque it won't work that way so oh, bump this up to 100 and I'll just fill this in real quick uh, command D edit transform distort and let's see the light source is going to be the left so I'll distort this around it's quicker than this I'm having a tough time with this shape I want the shadow to go here and here I believe that's why I use the distort because you can keep moving around and eventually get, get to where you're trying to be with it let me see if that's right that might not be right yeah I don't know if I like that it's not really right let's try again if not, I'll just draw it in real quick, but I'm trying to get it to where it starts from this point. This might be a little bit better. Let's try that. And that's what I was talking about with the transparent opacity are not fully opaque. So I'll get that up, part of that deleted. And I'll distort it one more time. Or you know what, better yet. I'll just delete from here to here be done with it okay there we go so and now what I'll do is I'll drop the opacity down that's the other thing I like about uh, doing this I can with working with the separate layers I can um, oh just realized something <laughs> sorry I, I can drop the opacity down when I need it right but here's what I just realized I'm working on the opposite side the this needs to be flipped horizontally and off my selection tool, brought back over here. There we go. All right. So yeah, if I want to keep playing with the opacity, I'll get that to about right there. Um, and the other thing that I'll probably do 
is I can go select load selection now like that add one more layer like I say in other videos I'm a, I'm a bit of a layer junkie I'll end up adding a bunch of layers and then have to condense down so and I can just add a little bit more of a gradient shadow just by you know having that selected and drawing that in a little bit like so and let's see do a little bit of blending in there not much all right so there's my uh, little quick pyramid there with the shadow and then now I would you know designate the um, the ground source or the plane or whatever the horizon whatever you want to call it add again another layer see I'm not even naming them now pyramid ground plane something like that and here I do use the gradient uh, just really quick and easy and you know as you, if you don't want it to be so deep of a shadow on the edge um, you can pull further away and that kind of blends that out like that uh, I think that'll be fine I'll drop that make sure it's below the shadows right there and then filter add noise is a good one to give it a little bit more grit and you, know, you can see I did that a little bit on the other ones um, then the other thing is you know if you want to add more of a light source another good way to do that is going to here grab uh, dark to translucent and then you can just kind of you know add some different shadows if you want you know if you want to vary it up a bit um, whatever you know so I'm gonna leave that though and then I'll take the selection tool one more time and D I'll grab from here up and generally when I do this particular shadow uh, or light source and everything I'll make this go with the light source that we're working with so the light will be to the right and I'll generally grab the gradient but I'll grab the the radial effect if I'm saying that right hopefully I'm forgive me if I'm not uh, and then uh, black to white radial and I think you pull out oh, opposite so hit command Z for back or undo hit X to flip the colors and then do it again and now the light should be from the starting point and the darkness and the shadows to where I pull just like so so if I want a stronger light source behind the pyramid you know something like that uh, if I want the light source to the right which I do just because that's what we're working with on the uh, uh, you know the focal point here so command D to deselect uh, again it's on well oh, actually I added that to the background one so let me command alt Z to go back a couple add one more layer pyramid sky or whatever and then yeah something like that and then now what I can do to lighten that a bit because I think that, that dark to the the left is too strong uh, just drop the opacity a little bit and the little part where I went over there I could just clip that off you know just keep working with it now the one thing I see is that underneath my pyramid you can see the uh, ground plane so what I'll do to fix that real quick is just select around the shape real fast and I generally save my selections as I go uh, so I can go back and edit things quicker and stuff like that so I would definitely recommend doing that and I'll show you how to do that here in a second so now I'm gonna drop a solid uh, white behind the pyramid as I thought I did okay right there is uh it wasn't above the ground plane so before I deselect I'm gonna go ahead and take and go up here and go select save selection uh, you know pyramid one p1 whatever and just keep doing that and it's it becomes really convenient especially if you're working on a uh, pretty decent sized project to go back and edit things like that um, and then one thing I'm not liking entirely I think there needs to be a little bit more distinguished uh, light and dark on the pyramid so I'm gonna select that one more time hopefully a little bit better than I just did that let me zoom in here 
And the trick to this exercise is just to really try to get, you know, realism and, and you know, better uh, feel on your, your shading and stuff like that. And it, it it's worth its weight in gold when you practice it a lot. You're, let me make sure I'm on top of that. Um, and you'll feel, you know, you'll feel really good when you, you get something and you kind of hit the nail on the head and, you know, you land the right shadow or texture that you're looking for. Uh, and you can kind of chalk that up in your mind and go, you know what, I've got uh, cloth really covered well or uh, metal surfaces or glass or wood grain or whatever you're trying to achieve. So you want to practice all these for that purpose. So Command D, select that again. All right, and uh, yeah, see, and one thing that's still bothering me real quick, that's what I do. I just sit here and keep nitpicking it until I can make it a little better, a little better. And then you take the same thing and you apply it to everything that you paint. Uh, another thing that you do is you take this technique and then you you find things uh, in your house maybe that you know you could do life studies of or, or um, um, you know whether it be um, a bowl of you know fruit. That's a popular one they get you to do in art school and stuff like that. So you just you know do that, practice, draw everything. Look at it, study the light, study the way that bounce light reacts to it, um, all that fun stuff. And before I uh, cut this one short, I just want to say thanks very much. I just hit 5,000 subscribers. I was extremely excited about that, and I just want to thank everybody for the support. Very kind of you. Uh, thanks for all the awesome comments. And I, you know, hopefully I get back to each and every one of you um, when, when you do comment and stuff like that. I try to do my best with that. So... Um, be sure to let me know what you'd like to see in the future and what will help you progress your art. And, uh, you know, as always, check out Blackstone on Indie Planet and follow me on Facebook under Ramp Studio Comics and, and things like that. So thanks very much for watching today. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Bye.